Holidays often mean stuffing ourselves at large family meals, but for many Oklahomans, that won't be a reality. In the U.S. Department of Agriculture's 2011 Household Food Security Report, Oklahoma ranked fourth in the nation for food insecurity, up from sixth place in 2010. Food insecurity has driven many Oklahomans to seek assistance from food banks, but increased requests for help and reduced donations have put the squeeze on those food banks. Rodney Bivens, Executive Director of the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma, and Eileen Bradshaw, Executive Director of the Community Food Bank of Eastern Oklahoma, spoke with me about food insecurity in Oklahoma. Rodney, how many Oklahomans are seeking food assistance right now in your area? Well, at any given time each week, we provide enough food to feed over 90,000 Oklahomans on any given week. And Eileen, what about in your area? You serve 24 counties in eastern Oklahoma. In any given week, we're putting out enough food to serve about 70,000 people. So, so I, Eileen, is that, scale. is that number up or down compared to the last few years? It's up. Um, this time last year, we would have said somewhere in the neighborhood of 60,000 meals. So it's definitely still on an upward trend. Why do you think that is? I think a lot of people are back to work but they're not maybe um, getting the overtime that they used to get or perhaps they had to settle for a lower wage position. And I think during the recession, a lot of people ended up actually having to budget for food assistance um, after their paycheck has been spent on utilities and rent and incidentals. There's really just not enough money at the end of the month or even at the beginning of the month to provide the food that their families need. So they've actually started to somewhat um, plan on needing to seek assistance for food. Rodney, what is the trend in the 53 counties you serve? Well, in the last four years, we've seen an increase of about 30 to 40 percent. Now, that's leveled off, but historically, it's leveled off and gone down, and we're not seeing any downward trends now. We're seeing it at that high level. And it's really due to chronic underemployment. People just don't have enough money to make uh, ends meet on a monthly basis. Is there a typical person that is seeking food assistance? Well, we're seeing more and more of the working poor, especially towards the end of the month that simply can't stretch their dollars far, farther enough to uh, have enough food for all their uh, family. Eileen, does that sound right for you too? That sounds exactly like who we're serving as well. Um, people who are doing what we ask of them, but still they're just not having enough income to make it through the month. Have volunteering and also donation levels kept pace with the demand? I feel very fortunate. Um, we have a strong volunteer community here in Tulsa that really steps up whenever we ask. And gratefully, you know, people seem to understand in the community that the need for food is still rising. And so they are stepping up with donations as well. Rodney, how much do programs like WIC and SNAP reduce food insecurity in Oklahoma? Well, it's tremendous. We, we can't have near the impact the government programs do because it's simply the millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of food they provide to people in the state of Oklahoma. So it's very critical that people that are eligible for WIC or SNAP continue those benefits where possible. Eileen, both of your organizations serve people in rural areas. How have you seen food insecurity change over the last few years in rural areas? I'm relatively new to the food bank, but just in my time here, we went and visited some of our more remote counties and the food assistance network there is so critical because many times there's only been one or two major employers in a county and if one of those goes away, which they have in several of our southern counties, the entire community experiences heightened need. Um, you know, I met one family where four generations of a family lost their job in one day when a mill closed and that whole community was impacted by hunger really overnight and the people that used to be the helpers then turned out to be need to seek assistance. Rodney, do you see the need as being more acute in rural parts of the state? It is. You know, the agriculture industry is not what it used to be in Oklahoma. We've done some uh, rural distribution over the last several weeks in about 10 different rural communities, and it was amazing to me the people were coming up and getting food, had never asked for food before in their lives, and didn't want to, but they had to because they were there for their families, their children. Rodney, the uh, impending fiscal slope negotiations have people concerned about the farm bill and about agriculture and specifically SNAP. What would happen if the funding goes away or is reduced dramatically for SNAP? Well, the latest estimates I've heard, they're between the House and the Senate. They're talking about between the 16 billion and 32 billion cuts over the next 10 years. And we're stretched to our limits now. 
we don't simply know what we could do from the food bank community to keep up with that increased demand because those people will turn to the food pantries, to the churches, to the food banks asking for additional help in food and we simply, our, our foodstuffs are stretched to the limit already. Eileen, this is a time of holidays for many people, but it's a busy time for you, right? That is, it is a busy time. Um, we're busy with increased need and we're also busy with help. You know, a lot of folks take time out to do something extra charitably at this time of year and we're very grateful for that, but it makes for a busy season. Eileen Bradshaw, Rodney Bibbins, thanks for joining us. Thank you.